Last time we had a look at our list of coolers and tried to determine which one was suitable to be used on top of a 7600X. Luckily, most of them are. Sure, the lower end of our chart was barely able to keep the thing away from the 95 degree C mark, but once you get into the pretty okay category, things were looking fine. And for today, we are going to do exactly the same thing, but for the 7900X. And let me tell you, things are not looking fine. This thing pushes 170 watts TDP, or to be exact, in Cinebench it will be pushing out 185 watts. So yeah, this is a pretty big mountain to climb. However, AMD states over and over again that the higher core count chips are meant to be used on that level 24-7. So let's assume a new baseline. If the cooler can keep the 7900X underneath 96 degrees C, it's okay. But I want the cooler to be able to do that 24-7 too. So I manually set the V-core to 1.352 and the ratio to be 54, which equates to exactly 185 watts in CPU-Z stress test, which in contrast to Cinebench I can run indefinitely long without having like the dips in between each run, which would be just annoying. Anyway, with the test setup done, we will now do the same thing. We are going to pick and choose individual coolers from our list and try to find the exact line where the no ends and where the yes begins. The rule is pretty simple. Install the cooler, hit it with 185 watts, which corresponds to 24-7 boost clock, and then wait until the temperature settles. Is it beneath 96 degrees C in a 23 degrees C normalized room? It's an okay. But the moment it hits 96, like, <clears throat> it's, it's up to the gulags with you. Our first candidate was the stock AMD Roth cooler from the previous generation. Yeah, needless to say that this was a shit show, so don't, don't do that. Uh, let's start with some be quiet this time. Yeah, may, maybe, maybe, maybe don't, don't. Uh, okay. Yeah, this still makes sense. If it couldn't handle a 7600X, how could it handle the bigger one? Oh, damn. So uh, here we already have the big issue with those watt TDP numbers. Out of the box, the Dark Rock Pro 4 is said to be able to handle 250 watts. And the test we are doing is pushing merely 185 watts. So, well, everybody calculates TDP as they wish. like. Uh, which is a problem, and the only solution is to try it out and see. I mean, the Dark Rock Pro 4 can cool down a 7900X for two minutes, but imagine you're doing like a 12-hour render. That, that's not going to end well. Those numbers are, are such a lie. From here, let's go to the Mugen, which uh, is, yeah. Poor Mugen. At this point, our list is basically cut in half, which, okay, and, um, yeah, not even the Arctic Freezer 34 eSports Duo could make it, yeah, which isn't making this video look very good. <laughs> but what about the... where is it? Here. But what about the Xilence M705D? That one did a hell of a job with the lower wattage. Ah, oh, so close, so close, but it's it's 96.4, it's 0.4 too much, so still a big fat no. And the fun thing is that I was still nice, because I normalized the numbers to a 23 degrees C room, and actually the M705D was sitting at 98.5 degrees C inside here, so uh, I was still kind of nice. That was foreseeable, but what about the D12L? Yeah, that, that's still a no. And if you're asking yourself why it's exactly 105 degrees C, that's because the room that I'm in has 25 degrees C or something around that, which then means 110 on the chip, and that's the moment I just pull the plug because I don't want to damage my chip. But okay, the U12A is a monster. What about that one? Ah, 0 0.6, mm, 0 0.6 too much. Okay, what about the NHD15? This is sitting wrong. This should be on the no list. This is a no. 
And we have a winner, 95.3. The NHD15 managed to do 95.3. That's 0.7 underneath the threshold. So yes, finally a green line and a very, very clear one at that. Jumping from slightly above 96 degrees C to slightly below allows us to create a very clear line where the fun stuff begins. And it also helps me to showcase what I said in the last video where cooler A might not be as powerful but better at lower water gist and cooler B which is a monster. Take the NHD15 and the Xylance M705D. Cooling down the 7600X, um, the M705D did a better job at. The NHD15 also did a good job but it was slightly behind this one. If you ramp up the wattage, however, this one falls off and this one keeps going. So, you know, never assume anything with coolers. It's, it's like a big black hole and you just hope. Yeah, the 120 was definitely a no, but uh, who in his right mind would use this to cool down a monster like this? That's... no. The 240, however, that one was able to pull it off. And so was the 280, 360 and 420. Yeah, I can definitely see like a, a trend here. So yeah, looking at this list, we are actually looking at a similar situation like for my 12900K. If you want to keep that thing cooled down using air, you have exactly one single choice. And from there, it's basically big as water coolers only. It's a bit fun because AMD actually advises you to use a 240 or bigger water cooler for the chip. Like, it's, I, I read it somewhere, I don't even remember where, but somewhere on the box it says like, use a a uh, two, uh, 240 or bigger red. This turns out to not be really a recommendation, but more like a command. But this also does kind of show how far behind cooler manufacturers actually are. In order to use the second best CPU, not even the best, in order to use the second highest Ryzen 7000 chip, you are going to need to purchase the best air cooler or switch lanes to a lot bigger water cooler. And this really shows how problematic the situation really is. Air cooler manufacturers really need to step up their game. Noctua, where is the new generation D15? Be quiet, when will you slap those silent wings onto a dark rock? Anyway, this is our final list. If you want to be using a 7900X, this is how big you need to go to make it happen. Pretty small list if you ask me. But don't play AMD like it's a Ryzen 7000 only problem. My 12900K that is rendering right now uses an NHD15 with three Noxia NF-A12X25s and it is still hitting 100 degrees plus during rendering. It, it, it sucks but chips like that are just uncoolable. But yeah, now you know what you need to keep a 7900X cool. I hope you enjoyed the video but on a side note we also have a Discord server and it starts to fill up rather quickly so if you want to join I have a link in the description below. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.